Hey there fellow YouTubers, long time no see. Hope all is well. It's 2018, so new year, new energy, new plan. Looking to be a bit more active with the channel, so fingers crossed I don't drop it on the toilet. To start the slight return to form, I decided to go small and obscure. Great thinking, huh? But yeah, <laughs> this game is called Defenders of Oasis, or in Japanese, Shadam Crusader. It was released in 1992 on the Game Gear and developed and published by Sega. So you may be asking yourself, why, 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 why? Simple answer, I had it on my 3DS and it sat there being sad that I hadn't played through it. Plus, I like the Arabic aesthetics and have fond memories of playing Sonic 1 on the Game Gear. That and I just wanted to make a video. Gotta get back into that. Defenders of Oasis and its glorious cover art is a JRPG that starts in a kingdom called Shanadar that is on the verge of being attacked by the Empire of Aflat. Now, the prince who is the main character, surprise surprise, is entrusted with one of three rings that was used to imprison Aramon a thousand years ago. In terms of story, the game is fairly average. You get a genie, which is cool, who's also your magic user, a sailor named Sinbad, wait, Salim in the English version, and a thief named Sheet. Wrong again, he's called Agwar. <laughs> in terms of gameplay, the three human characters are nearly identical, outside of the HP being a little different, and two skills, Salim's attack all move and Agmar's assault, which causes him to hide and on his next turn do a stronger attack. Think like a charge move in many other games that's nearly as useless. Other than making enemies miss, which is nice, you're taking two turns to do 150% damage, roughly, when you could simply strike and do around 33% more damage over those two turns. The game is a standard JRP2 from 92, so a good offense is generally the best defense. Now, it's not by mistake that I jump so quickly away from mentioning the characters because there really isn't much to them, nor to the few places you visit. Sparse populations and paper-thin characters don't make this a terrible game, nor do I think this one is, simply an average one. The game has some neat aspects, but before getting into that, let's take a gander at the genie. The genie gets its own little section because it's radically different than the other three. Using magic as one aspect, however, beyond healing and traveling, the spells are sort of sucky. Instead of simply leveling up and learning new ones, the player has to find these scripts dotted all over the dungeons you'll explore. Some have spells to learn, or tell game history, or clues for the few puzzles present. I like it. Also of interest, the genie doesn't level up. You find, buy, and earn random drops and items to use to increase its HP and MP. It can be pricey, and it is needed towards the latter portions of the game, but I still found it rather neat. A couple other neat things of note. Knockout and Poison is cured after battle. Not too rare of a concept, but I like it. Poison can kill, so if ignored for so many turns, the character will die. Also, if poisoned multiple times, it actually speeds up the process, so think something along the lines of stacked poison. Plus, it's got a sound test. Personally, I like those things. It's really easy to access it in this one too. All you have to do is hold up and press start at the press start screen. Speaking of sound tests, a brief word about music. There are 28 tunes to the soundtrack. Um, though the songs aren't going to blow people's socks off, they do convey the tone of the game decently. Now, for me, my favorite three tracks are The Final Battle, Gillen 1, and Sadness. Honestly, this would be a good game for younger people and beginners to JRPGs. It can be beaten over a weekend, as it took me about 10 to 12 hours to beat. So if you're looking for something to blitz through, eh, just, just throwing out ideas. General straightforwardness makes it rather easy to figure out what to do and how to progress. Odd thing of note though is that you save by turning off the game, which is kind of peculiar, but a eh, little, little different. Anyway, I played this on my 3DS uh, through buying it off the eShop, and this game is available in Japan, the US is in the PALS region of the 3DS eShop. It was, as far as I know, as of as of making this recording, it was under $5. So if you're interested in a cheap RPG to play, that's you know, from 92, give it a go. Anywho, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you have played it or end up doing so, let me know in the comments below. So until we meet again, have a good day and take it easy.